y'all welcome to the first episode of nightcap it's your boy will yo 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 it's kills kills you already know what it is man welcome welcome we appreciate y'all coming out appreciate y'all, y'all sharing y'all nightcap with us let's get to it for sure for sure kills man just some chill stuff that we're gonna get into just a little podcast for y'all if you up late nights or if you want to listen to it in the day we up late nights and we always you know try to little sip something throughout the week and like to talk about some current events tonight I'll let y'all know what i'm off of i'm off the do say you know what i'm saying you say i'm not even doing it to look i'm you trying know what i'm saying i'm trying to take know. it I'm, I'm just taking it easy man i just i just got a little bit i'm good man man you I'm know. up in my system right quick and i'm cool I, i've been drinking do say all day you know, so i've been drinking do say all day i'm trying you know when you work out hard you gotta do the cool down that's what i'm on right now i'm doing I'm the cool down with little heineken right quick so that's what that's me that's I good. feel you. It's I've dope. been I, I've been drinking a little little smooth shit too. I was on the motherfucking um apple ciders earlier earlier, but bro, man, um, you know how you dealing with this corona, bro? Hey man, this corona, it's uh, uh it's 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 hard in a way because you know coming from 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 a person like me, I, I like I like to move around and do stuff. You know what I'm saying? And the world being shut down. It's kind of hard. To, it's kind of hard to do that, but it's for health, and I understand. But a lot of people not dealing with this quarantine, if you will. But one thing people is dealing with: if you healthy enough to get that unemployment, you dealing with that extra. <laughs> dealing with that extra twelve hundred, you show them with that extra twelve hundred. <laughs> really talk. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people on that. But me, as far as me dealing with the corona. I'm decent, man. I'm okay. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be alive. I'm blessed not to have it. Well, I don't even know if I have it. You never know. We asymptomatic now. Asymptomatic, boy. Quote unquote. Yeah. But yeah, bless. Just, just bless. And I'm gonna use this. This, this is a pause, right? This is a pause. You turn a negative into a positive. You know what I'm saying? You need to come out better from this. We gonna come out better from this, right? You know what I'm saying? Sure. You're not a better person that you went in. Never in life will you ever get a chance to pause everything your whole life your whole from working and everything come out get better and be stronger and that's nigga, the whole thing nigga i'm about to pause your ass keep saying pause nigga. <laughs> pause i understand i feel you bro um motherfucking um rona is deep bro this shit is some shit we ain't never seen before but i'm just good man been able to get time with the family and shit but mm-hmm. um it's just funny man going to like the store and shit everybody masked up i'm masked up but ain't nobody doing no robbery and shit it's just a little different bro it's like it's just a little different man it's just it's way different that fuck a little different motherfuckers usually to themselves but it's like now if you want to talk to somebody it's like a fear to the shit like i don't even want to talk to certain people like somebody gonna get mad like nigga, you spreading your germs over here so <laughs> i'd be chilling man yeah, it's, it's people doing the most out here, but you know, for the majority part, we all understand it's for the health workers. I mean, it's for, it's for health reasons, but shout out to the health workers. Like we see on every show, everybody does it. It's the politically correct correct thing to do. But not, yeah. for real though, I mean, shout out to them. And everybody on the front lines out there that's actually got to work, you know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, we out here for y'all, man. Thank y'all for what y'all do. Man, that's real shit, man, because like, it's different for them people that's out there working because they constantly around different people. So somebody that they came across got the shit. And it's like, I'm just glad I ain't them. Not to say in a bad way, like I'm glad I ain't them. I'm just happy that I don't have to do that. I'm glad to be in the, the situation where I'm good. Yeah, you blessed, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, and like I was saying earlier, it's, it's kind of just use this time to get better. If you're not using, I mean, what else are you doing? Well, you know? yeah, you know what? I ain't trying to play devil's advocate on you, but some people, man, they take things, they take time in these situations differently. Like, it's a crisis. So, you know, some people sometimes just want to fall back and just be by themselves and meditate. But if you want to figure that into your your um, situation, like you was talking about, about getting better, you know, I think I seen some people out there talking about, like, if you ain't trying to start no business or if you ain't reconnected with friends, it's like, man, be cool, man. Yeah, just be cool. People I'm, dealing I'm, with their I'm family. Feeling, I'm feeling you. It's not... Yeah. About being better is not, not it's, it's not about what somebody says. You being it's, it's it's not constrained to a box or whatnot. Everybody got their ways of being better. Everybody yeah. got to be better in some way, shape, or form. Just because they're not your better, they're not the better that you're looking for. Don't yeah. mean be better in some certain kind of way. I'm not saying that you have to do something great and amazing. Just be better than you were before this happened. 
in yeah. whatever way in capacity. That's all we're saying. We want yeah. to turn it to a positive. You're you know right I mean? about that. I think I was just adding that in not to come against you, but like just add more clarification on that. Like this, I've been seeing that too, man. Like people be so driven by money, man. And I think this is one time when you had to fall back. Like money is a tool and you definitely need it. If you ain't on your bridge, you slipping. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like economic collapse can happen. You know what I mean? And like, you do you have, you know what I'm saying? Certain foundations set in your household, then the relationships that you care about and the things that you need set up. So that's kind of what I've been focused on, man. Just trying to reconnect, get my family right. Schooling at home been, I'm gonna say it real, it's been a bitch. Um, trying to just balance those things, man. This virtual classroom. Man, I get so much props to the teachers, bro. I ain't even gonna stunt. Like they, they should, they should definitely get paid more. That ain't no friend at all. No friend at all. The teachers should be federal workers or whatnot. Really. <laughs> they should be federal workers. They should. That should be that because that's a they essential workers. I mean, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of child abuse going up. It's a lot of <laughs> all kind of stuff. People weren't people. People people having kids all day. Oh yeah, let me have right. those. They go. Yeah, they now they got to sit all in the house with them, and now you the teacher in this classroom. So, and now you don't know what to do. Right. You know what I'm saying that come from a lot of that come from a lot of time. You know, just I'm not even gonna get into it. Just we just talking about coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you know. You we gonna get the coronavirus. Like I said, turn the negative to a positive, and we just keep on walking forward. Yeah, man. But I didn't. I just been focusing a little bit harder. But it's crazy though, like I'm looking at like some of the research that's coming out, man, and some of the stuff is showing like like a lot of conspiracy theorists type shit. It's like you never see the politicians with masks on and shit. Mm -hmm. They just be out here. They always just shaking hands with everybody, like it ain't nothing. You see, it's like, all about your risk assessment though, you know? Yeah. It's all about your risk, your risk tolerance. I would not. I mean, cause in the eventually you gotta get back out in this world, right? Yeah. So, what are you willing to, what's your risk tolerance? You know, some people are so scared they don't want to come outside because they think they're going to come out, they don't, They think they're going to catch if they, if they walk outside and just get into the air or whatnot. You know, you got other people, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, like, hey, we trying to get to that herd immunity, right? You know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and catch it, then I'll be immune. Yeah. Everybody on some dumb shit like that. Who the fuck want to catch coronavirus? But you know. <laughs> well, you got, you got people, people out there, bro. Thinking that though, you know. No, you got people out here, bro, catching coronavirus, bro. Is a dude out here licking toilet bowls and all type of stupid shit, and he caught it. Yes, because they want they want that immunity. But the, the thing is, they don't know how, how long that immunity even lasts. Well, to have coronavirus still fucked up if if it because you don't know how it's gonna affect your body. Yeah, some people caught it even after getting rid of it. But this dude wasn't even on that, what you was talking about. This dude was just on some goofy shit, I guess, trying to get, like, go viral or whatever. And uh, he wound up licking toilet bowls and wound up catching the shit. Like, goofy as hell, bro. Silly as hell. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, man. It's taking motherfuckers out, though. The death tolls of this shit is, like, crazy, though. Like, I've been seeing those shits. I just really, I really want to know like the results from like Atlanta and shit. I'm gonna try to check that shit out. It's like the certain places that's open back up. Mm -hmm. so they've been open up for a little bit of time now. So just to know like, do they have any spike in cases? I've seen certain stuff, but you know, you gotta really dig in deep on the research. And that's what I was saying really more about the swinging the conversation in. It's like, I've seen some stuff about like your boy, Dr. Fauci, bro. That's kind of got him out there, bro. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy, uh, man. It's, 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 it's some things out there about Mr. Fauci or, or whatnot, where everybody's saying he's supposed to be the, be, be the end all, be all, or whatever he says, but how society is supposed to move. There's some things out there about him. But yeah. like, it's, it's uh, someone, some people might call them conspiracy theories. Some people might call it fact. It's whatever you believe. I mean, it's whatever you do your research and figure it out for yourself. That's yeah. all. That's all we can say. We're not advocating no knowing any position, anything that you should take. Do your research, find out what's out there, and then let's get back to us and we can we can chop it up from that. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's about the about, about, about to start you for real. Yeah, and it kind of pull you to a certain point, like an ultimate point with me is like, um, you know, how much do you believe and how much don't you? You know what I mean? What risk are you willing to take? It's like, man, you gotta feed a family, so you gotta go out there and do what you gotta do. So you know, you be safe and take the precautions that you gotta take, or whatever. And then you do your research. You know, a lot of times you got um, information out here about certain things that you should do to protect yourself. But 
like I say, man, to each his own, man. I've seen things that say you should wear masks. I've seen things that say you shouldn't wear masks. To my understanding is that, you know, the mask ain't going to stop you from really catching a virus, but it's going to prevent you from, you know, being acceptable. Yeah, somebody from, else, if, you asym if you're asymptomatic. So Exactly. So, like, yeah, basically. And you know what? There's so much up and down stuff. You know, you talk about the temperature that the virus can survive in. So, you know, you don't know how much that's really going to affect. You know what I mean? Like, the spikes that's going to come. I know they wanted to flatten the curve. That was the main thing. But I think the conversation has kind of gotten away from flattening the curve. It's got to like a whole different wave. And that's kind of scary because it's like, you hit a conspiracy theorist, they talk about like, they want to promote this vaccine on you, right? And when we go back to the original conversation, when we was talking about the virus, like in the media and everything else, it was more like flattening the curve, right? How many people really gonna put a vaccine in their body? Come on now, really? Stop yeah. it. But I understand that, but I'm just talking about really yeah. like, just like the, the storyline, bro. Like when it first came out, it was like, oh, yo, we gonna, you know, implement this stay home. And when you gotta stay home, it's because we're trying to flatten the curve. But mm -hmm. now you hear so much talk about the vaccinations and the vaccine and, you know, how we really gonna rebound, like what's really gonna be. You see the government wanna propose something that's gonna take us into 2021 with the uh, another bailout. So it's like, it's kind of scary though in the same sense. It's just like, bro, it, 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 it may it, not know. Is, but the only thing really scary is just, just human nature. You're just scared of the unknown, you know? And that's just what it, that's just what it is. It's kind yeah. of like, but it's, it's one thing to have an unknown when not having a track record or, or a background. Like, if I don't know you, and then that's the unknown. But if I know you, and I know you got some sketchy shit in your background, I'm going to look at you a little bit harder. And that's a guarantee. That's the difference when we talk about with this government. Like, we know they be on some sketchy shit. Like, even with well, the government. Don't have skeletons in the class. Come on now. Right. But even with the active shit that the government do, like, they don't hide shit, bro. It's certain shit that the government just do, and that is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. People like, you know, we look at like the fact that we've been so much in in a crazy situation right now and they just bailed us out. You know what I mean? So you look at the average American person when they think about like, nah, American ain't bold to help us. But when you think about like a black person that's thinking about reparations, what the hell? These motherfuckers just pulled out all this money for some shit that they consider to be the severity of that level to do so. So you don't think that all the shit that we done been through is worth that shit? So like I can understand like people looking at that. So like that's real shit, bro. It's just like it's it's a crazy world we living in now. And Rona is kind of awakening that to the masses. Like boom, it's a shock. It's like a they threw cold water on your ass. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing. But everything ain't as simple as you made it seem as you as you put it out to be. Mm -hmm. Or well, not, but you made some good points though. And I really appreciate shit. And I'm really rocking with that reparations comment though. I mean, yeah. But the, even even if you do a college fund, or that's some a shit, racial thing. It's a racial thing. You gotta see. It's, it's so complicated. But it, it, it's not though, because when you look at like you know Native Americans got taken care of, you know Jews get taken care of, you know the America exports a lot of money to other motherfucking people are based upon their culture. Like they might have set a country upon what then their culture was. You know what I mean? But we within the same country as they is, and they ain't done it. So how you gonna take care of somebody else? And you don't take care of your own people. You know, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. But this is something that really shines light on people who really say that. It's like, you can't say that they wrong in what they say as far as y'all can get some money on some shit or do some shit. Because when everybody was fucked up, y'all hurried up and did some shit. You see what I'm saying? Like Native Americans been took care of. They got fucked up and they got fucked over. But we did too. And it wasn't shit that was done within us, within the same. They let us integrate with them. Like, come on. Like, that didn't, you see what we at now. We all still trying to get there. And they got benefits in the past that they didn't give us. They, they got free land. You know what I mean? They got a lot of breaks that we didn't get. So it's just like, they got money and funding to help do farms and shit that got passed around down to generation after generation. They was able to come in and commit genocide on certain folks. But they, mm -hmm. benefit, but they benefit, you know what I mean? We wasn't, you know what I mean? So I think that's a little bit different. But, um. Yeah, but ain't nobody, you know, with that being said, just to flip it around, there's no people that's more resilient than us, right? You know yeah, yeah. No people, I mean, we always get a short end. Kelvin, answer. Kelvin, let me, let me tell you, let, let's figure this, right? Let's say, like, they just gave the stimulus money out, right? Mm -hmm. And they say they don't give you no stimulus money, but I give a check. What you gonna ask? 
Where the hell my check at? That's the same thing. Oh, ain't no, di- ain't no different. We both American motherfuckers that's been affected by America's shit, and we with, wrapped in within this. I got some money and you didn't, and you go ask me why the hell did you get taken care of and I did, not and that's what we, t- and that's what we talking about, like the reparations when we put that title. In. It's exactly that. We know other folks that's been taken care of that y'all did damage to, and y'all do y'all feel responsible for, and y'all claim accountability for. Y'all claim accountability for doing wrong to us, but y'all niggas ain't paid us out. Cash us out, my nigga. But I hate to go into a, a whole hotep side conversation off. I what think, the fuck, Rona? <laughs> they, they didn't. They didn't want to give us this for COVID nineteen. So I mean, now on top of this, just, we're just gonna give money to black people. I feel you on that. I ain't saying that COVID nineteen should be the reason why they do it, but I'm just saying within that conversation that people that's been saying that shit for years. I can under I can understand them more now and, and kind of be on their side to say, hell yeah, motherfucker, come up with some shit. Um, throughout all this shit though, they benefit off us getting money too because they knowing that we gonna spend this money within our economy. If we don't have no money at the bottom to feed up to the top, bro, the economy don't support itself. You see what I'm saying? So like us gaining more debt, and more interest, and then they gaining more wealth at the end result. They still need capital to do that. So us getting money from them is part of them still gaining too. I, I believe a lot of the politicians care about the average American. I do. But they don't really care about that more. They care about them damn selves. Yeah, but you know, the crazy part is what's really going on right now that people not even really uh, paying attention to is uh, one of the greatest transfers of wealth that we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. This is this is, this is is probably going to be bigger than, than 08, 09. Yeah. Every time we have a major dip in the market, you know, it's always something crazy going on be, going on behind that. Nobody really say. So now we got COVID-19, which gives us a reason to shut everything down, shut the market down. We ain't stock prices completely low, so everybody can, you know, so so if they say if you got money in this time, you're going to be rich. Yeah. You can be rich if you, if you got money in this time. Crazy part is not a lot of people got money in this time or whatnot because people... I mean, I'm feeling sorry for the people who can't get the unemployment or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? We got to work the, the the minimum wage jobs and our essential workers or whatnot, and still got to work and can't really provide the way they should provide if they had like 15, 16, 17 all hour jobs or whatnot, right? Yeah, but that still ain't shit. You know what I mean? Like we got to get to it's a point. It's still nothing, but you got to yeah. find where to start or whatnot. Yeah. You know what so the thing is, it's just, it's just uh, I was just getting back to this, this, this transfer of wealth. That's going on. So stock prices are extra, extra low. You know, extra rich people and people with money, you know, saying is buying everything up, and then the stock price is gonna go back up or whatnot. Right. So priced out so from the average person to even right. get it. So and when you trying to come in, you're gonna have to pay more and they're gonna come up. More, so you gotta pay yeah. more for the stocks. And yeah. they do this all the time. Every every 10, 15, yeah, every 10, 12 years, well, stuff like this happen. I know stuff like this happen every 10, 12 years, but you kind of know, and as we're getting older, we can see. What's really going on? Yeah, we but you are team prices. Well, you already know, man. Like when we look at the system of like how our money is set up, like if you do a little research, you will come across, you know, what I'm saying like the, the um, world banks. And if you know anything about money, then it's gonna come with debt. And I don't see how the hell you pay debt back with debt. I just don't. I just don't see that shit. I just don't. Well, even if whatever way you try to spin it out, and motherfuckers try to give you a correct answer for it, it's still that. We use the dollar, the, do, the dollar is worthless. The dollar is worthless. Ever since we lost the, uh, we, we stopped, we stopped backing up the gold. Right? Yeah. But then after that, we backed it up with, with with us. It's been backed up with everybody who got a fucking social security number. If you work, you got to pay taxes. So that's credit like a motherfucker for every citizen you come in, you know they're going to pay taxes. So it's guaranteed money that you're going to make off of them. Nigga, that's it. That that's how, that that's how you, huh? Don't go so far though. But what I'm saying is, how do you pay them back with what they gave you? They need to tap. They, <laughs> you can't. That's you can't. Thing. That's why I tell you, you can't. At the end of the result, where if you really look at the game, bro, you can never pay this shit back. And that's the realization I came to a long time ago when I when I figured that I'm looking at it. I'm like, all right, we go borrow money from banks, right? And if we had certain resources that we was paying it back with, then that's cool. But we paying these niggas back the money that we paying monopoly. They gave us fake money or whatever. Say we put value into this shit, right? So now we giving this shit back to them. So we gonna give them back more than what they gave us? All right, this shit still don't mean shit. So if, at the end of the day, 
them niggas want to be like, all right, bro, you got to really give us some shit for this shit. You can't really find value in it because it's, there's no finite amount of it. Like gold. There's no value. In, in order, but, in order I'm for telling, it to work the way it's supposed to, you have to be able to place value in it. I'm and telling you what it is, bro. Any monetary value. Bro, this, what, bro. Said, this is what it is. Bro, it's power because now you got a whole system set up for people that's going to labor for your yeah. benefit. That's what it is, bro. Motherfuckers gonna go to work and that work gonna come with money and that work, that money gonna come with taxes, which yeah. gonna ultimately benefit them because they gonna still be able to receive all the goods that you got going. Like whatever goods that they need, it's still like it's a whole game. It's like motherfuckers playing Monopoly and you the ringmaster. That's how the motherfuckers that's up in the one percent is. They chilling. Like they already know, like you motherfuckers working for us and we chilling motherfuckers. We stacking mm -hmm. this money and we gonna do what the fuck we wanna do. So that's, that's that mindset. That's the mindset we get. We 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 are we are in a mindset or we grow up or would have been taught ever since we was little and even college, couldn't you know what I'm saying? Uh, we taught to be workers. Yeah, it's the mindset that we're taught, and we're taught in school, we're taught in college. We taught to be workers. They produce school produces workers or whatnot, and we need to be in that mindset where we taught to, you know, uh, instead of being consumers, be producers. You know, and be the ones that's out here getting money instead of spending money. It's all right to spend money when you have money, but we get money and we spend money before we spend money before we have money to fall back on. Or whatnot. A lot of people out here with this coronavirus messed up right now. You know, just because you live paycheck to paycheck. You know, it's through no some and some and some of it's through no fault of their own or whatnot, but it's just the way society. Just the way yeah. stuff is. You, know? you right about that, man. I'm just taking time trying to snack. Like I got certain bills I ain't gotta pay for. I ain't gotta pay for daycare right now. So I'm cool or after school or whatever the hell you wanna say that you gotta pay for. I ain't gotta pay for it right now because I'm at home with my kids, so I'm stacking all that. Run all that. I'm gonna keep all that in my pocket. Yeah, but it's but um, people out here spending though. Wow. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, man. I've been stocking up on food, so like, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't probably spent since we've been on Rona. I didn't probably spent probably about a grand on food, bro. I ain't gonna even lie. Essentials. That's essentials, brother. We talking like, about essential items. Like I ain't been trying to eat out or nothing like that, but I just been trying to stock up my cabinets and just make sure everything's straight and just kind of get into a whole new rhythm. So I'm kind of grateful for that because going through the hustle and bust or the regular work day and regular week, I wouldn't have time to sit down and think about, okay, let me go through the cabin and see what I'm missing. Let me go through and throw out these old spices and shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I've been able to do that and I've been eating a lot better too because I've been able to think about it because I, I see what I got and I'm like, oh, I can make this and add this in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just been able to be uh, more efficient with what I got in my kitchen not wasting money overall. So. And that's something that's something, that's something you probably weren't even doing before this Rona stuff hit. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't. I was just running like whatever was able to make. Better in your own way because of this. Positive. Yeah. Negative into a positive. Let's get it. Yeah, that's always all good. So man, hate to go back to a negative, but we had a lot of depths, you know, kind of recently, bro. We got um yeah. your man Lil Richard, you know what I mean? He passed away. You know? Yeah, we had him. Yeah, we had him. Yeah, Richard the motherfucker boy. Exactly, yeah, Richard man, uh, well, architect of rock and roll basically. Yeah, I remember that. Um, it's like a snippet from him from David Letterman or whatever, and like he going in or whatever, like talking about all the people that came through him. But he ain't lying though. Like Jimi Hendrix, James Brown, mm -hmm. Beatles. Hey man, he had a lot of people come up through him, man. Like that sounded kind of homo, but <laughs> oh, we we'll have to edit that shit out, he boy. You put a lot of people on, <laughs> right? You put, put a lot, lot of people on, right? <laughs> Whoa, pause, no homo, boy. The fact that what he was doing, you know, had drew a lot of people to him, to him to get their stars. Yeah, oh, but it's, hey, you know, rock and roll. You hey. can, you can truly, he truly deserved that money. Hey, I seen, I seen another thing too that was talking about him that said that um. They wouldn't let him sing when he first came out because he was a black man or whatever. But when he started dressing kind of feminine, then they figured he was, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the other side of the, you know, street. And that's you know a whole, other, and that's a whole nother conversation we can get into as well. Yeah, not right now. But that's a whole nother. I, 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 I don't. Yeah. But they, I don't but, understand. But, but they let they let him perform once he showed that he was more inclined like that, or I guess that's a good word, a good way to phrase it. But that's crazy though, man. Had to entertain them in a way that they would like to be entertained and was not. But, 
You know, the yeah. black man, they want to make sure that we not, you know what I'm saying? They accept us if we know if we don't threaten them. I guess threatened them by, threaten by guess, us in any shape, way, or form. Yeah, so, I guess threatened by getting with their yeah. women, I guess. But then Miss Betty Wright passed away, you know, my joint by her is tonight, tonight, you know what I mean? But, oh, yeah. Clean up woman. Yep. Yeah. But you know, man, she, she'd have been sampled so many times, man. That's the, that's the dope part about it, man. You know, huge imprint on the music. Industry. Yeah. Huge and, industry. Yeah. Then you got like Andre Harrell passed away, bro. So, you know, that's just history, bro. Like, we nah. wouldn't, right. We wouldn't even have hip hop in the way that we do. And bro didn't let certain people get in and mm -hmm. do what he did. So, I guess all the kudos go to bro with that. And so, yeah, like, Puff, Andre did it. Man, bro. He did it. it. It's just so crazy, though, man. It just lets you know how precious life is and, like, you know, how much you just take every moment that you can for, you know, yeah. for what it is. Like, you know, live it up, live it up. But, yeah. um, you know, with that, bro, like, I, um, I've been checking out the verses. And so, like, when you talk about Andre Har Harrell, I think about the one versus battle that had um, Teddy Riley and Babyface. But I ain't go like going into that battle, bro. I ain't gonna even front. I'm looking at the battle and I'm like, um, I had Teddy Riley going in. You know what I mean? Yeah, Teddy, Teddy Riley. I ain't gonna even stunt, bro. Cause like Teddy, Teddy produced. You know what I mean? Heavy. You know what I mean? So like he be making groups and shit. So like, but you forgot about Babyface. I know, and Babyface makes groups yeah. and shit. He made groups and shit too. So like it just. That's People sleep on them. Hey man, it just it took me a minute to get back in tune, bro. But once I got back in tune, I was cool. The battle was cool besides Teddy fucking up. And Teddy was fucking up big time, bro. Like they had to redo their shit. They had to reschedule their shit. Reschedule their shit. I said reschedule. Oh Teddy, man, you supposed to come ready. It's battle, it's battle time, man. What's going on? Yeah, but the fact that Buddy had like Hey man, Babyface got some. Teddy got some joints too, bro. I can't even. Teddy got some joints, but he ain't no Babyface level. To be. Yeah, Babyface heavy, bro. Like, baby, like, but that's a whole another level. He's, but, he got his hand in every part of the music industry in some way, shape, or form. That's true. And but Teddy got like Teddy got like the party joints and the R and B joints. Babyface is really heavy R and B, like mellow, soft. You know, get your lady in the mood type shit, and that shit do score you points, bro. I ain't gonna lie, but when I'm looking at, I'm looking at like giving everybody their credit. You know what I mean? Like giving them credit due for what they do. And Teddy, man, Babyface just dope though. Babyface got him beat. I ain't dope. Gonna... He also did that New Jack Swing type thing. Yeah, I ain't gonna even start. So let's go to the next one, man. They had um, they had T Pain and Lil John, bro. Who you got, bro? Yeah. You know what? what? You already know, man. I like, man. I like, man. but I've always been one of them. I ain't gonna say uh I like I like that music. I'm I am i am always I always been one of them types that want to get crumped with it, you know. I just, I don't even know how to describe it. But so you I, know when John come on, some some get in me and I'm ready to get it cracking. So, all right. So I kind of been thinking about this one and I ain't gonna even front to you. Like Lil John, the hardest shit that Lil John got, bro. Like he got the hard shit with the street shit with the uh kiss the styles and past the troy this is off the charts what that nigga he he got some shit that we came up on bro i ain't gonna even stunt bro i remember when when dub brought that shit we came out to that shit in the basketball game that shit was hard bro i ain't gonna even mm -hmm. lie um and then even to the looter and the usher and shit and then even to the you know the the um mm -hmm. european european shit he be doing epd whatever the hell they call that shit john got a catalog Man, T, I gotta T Pain got some shit, and, and I'm gonna have to agree with you, bro. And a slight edge, I'm gonna have to go to Lil Jon, and I have to say a slight edge. And the reason why I say that is because T Pain, bro, like his auto tune was like what he did to get in the game because like that's what was needed at that time, and that's kind of what was on. And it did hit and it changed the game, and I give him credit for that. It got played because everybody started doing the shit. Mm hmm. But the nigga can sing. Like he's proven. We didn't know he could sing to the mass singer, nigga. Stop. No, it. no. Before Mass Singer, <laughs> before Mass Singer, you can check this out. You can go on YouTube and check this out. He did a tiny death shit before Mass Singer. 
he did an acoustic like setup type shit where he just did like playing the guitar and did acapella type shit. You got about the Tiny Desk series on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, nigga. Like this, a lot of stuff, a lot of artists be doing. So, that he so like this nigga is a musical genius. So like with that being said, I, that's why I give Lil John a slight edge because we like the hard shit. And T Pain don't have the hard shit like John got the hard shit that we like. Genius, but was it able to? Was he able to? Sh- to get across as the musical genius of the musical gen- as the musical genius that we know, like the, the Michael Jacksons, and I'm like, I'm talking about that kind of transit. When you talk so, about music, so genius, let me let me right? give you let me give you an analogy using basketball. You ready? I'm listening. What if you have a traditional big man that play in today's NBA? Would he be able to display his real skill? No. Exactly, and that's what I'm talking about with T-Pain. T-Pain at the time, I ain't even gonna lie, like that was the shit that he was hitting and he was killing on. But if it's a product and you gotta get it out there, it kind of diluted what was what we liked the quality of the game because everybody started doing it, you know what I mean? But like the songs that this nigga put out, bro, like they hits. Like when hit. somebody, huh? Yeah, they was hits, I'm agreeing with you. That's what I'm saying. So like when a nigga consistently put out motherfucking hits, Nigga, it ain't just the motherfucking auto-tune. If this nigga was just putting out songs, this nigga would have killed it. The auto-tune was the motherfucking icing on the cake, the motherfucking sprinkle on the top. You know what I'm saying? Like the extra pizzazz on it. And that's he, what he He was doing auto-tune, but he took it to another level, though. Yeah. He made that piece. Yeah, not. but you know, he... Cameo was doing auto-tune, too, way before him. Yeah, but, but you, you mean Roger Trout and them. You know what I'm talking about? Roger Trout, not Cameo, nigga. The cameo was on it, but Roger Trout nigga is the nigga with auto tune. Like that's the nigga. Yeah, but I'm saying the cameo was on it. That's why I was. But I know, I know about. I'm saying like most people would. Yeah. Would be. Ro- Roger Trout is the nigga that motherfucking Dr. Dre went to go get nigga. California. Yeah. Nigga, yeah, nigga. Party. Yeah, that's the nigga. Computer love, nigga. That's the nigga, nigga. But I feel what you're saying. They kind of use it in some parts, but that's the nigga that's known for it. But when you think about it, that's why that's why I said what I said. When you think about auto tune, if you're looking at younger generations, they gonna say T Pain. They might even say Young Thug, Roddy Rich, and all these motherfuckers that they listen to. But the nigga is Roger Trout, bro. That's the nigga. He the nigga. You know what I mean? I don't know if it maybe it's somebody else before then that we don't know about. Man, but tell, tell these niggas who Roger Trout is, man. Man, one of the greatest musicians that ever did it. Like, just YouTube, just YouTube the nigga, listen to his music, and then you can go um, Roger Trout, Google Roger Trout samples used. You know what I'm saying? And then you can run from there. And that's all you got to do. Great musician. He uh, met his end before he should have. You know what I'm saying? But dope as hell, man. Dope as hell. But let's go into another one, man. Let's see what we got, bro. Let's see what we got on here. They had Timberland and Swiss Beats. <coughs> oh, oh, man. I got my winner already. But, you know what I'm saying? I can, I don't know. You, know, you want me to go first this time? Or, you know what I'm saying? Or you want to go first? You know what? I'm going to give it to Timberland. Even though it might be blasphemous, I'm not really a fan of Timberland. I'm going to give it to Timberland just based off the fact of everything that he, his catalog is bigger. Somebody's range, range. He's yeah. Missy Ellie. He's responsible for a lot of stuff. Hey, oh, not. hey, Swiss is too. Swiss, Swiss is too. He was Swiss young. Is, like he I put said, a lot but, of motherfuckers on. Yeah, Swiss is too. But Tim put a lot. Of, Tim put a lot of people on. You know what I'm saying he put a lot of people on, and you know, Aaliyah. I mean, so yeah, you do got Aaliyah. You got Missy. You know what I'm saying? You got what, um, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if you want to say 702 came out of that, but that's out of Missy or whatever, whoever signed them or whatever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But they had a couple joints or whatever. But Aaliyah and Missy kind of like the heaviest. Genuine, can't, you can't say Timberland without saying Genuine. You can't say Jay-Z without saying Timberland. That's it's, what I'm saying. You know, but, he, he had, but, a, had a heavy influence on what was going on. Like, when he was big, yeah. yeah. But on the other side, Swiss didn't work with them motherfuckers too. You he know did. what I'm saying? So like, but Tim, I don't know. Tim songs got more got more weight though. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I'm, I don't even want to defend Timberland because I don't really like him like that. I'm gonna go with you. He's better. I'm I'm gonna grab with you and I'm gonna say Timberland on that one too. So they got RZA and DJ Premier. Uh, 
Okay. I'm going with RZA. Man, RZA got the impact, bro. RZA, go, yeah. RZA got the impact. My man's uh, premiere got the range, bro. Like, like the 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 different sounds and the different qualities, bro. Like, stuck on RZA name, man. Come on, man, bro. Like, <laughs> that's some shit, bro. That's some shit, like. Um, damn, bro. I don't even know. It's kind of hard for me on this one because I want to respect. Like, I love Wu Tang so much. My cuz put me on Wu Tang. They like, was legendary, groundbreaking. Come man, on. I I fuck with a lot of them motherfuckers. Not everybody in Wu Tang, but a lot of them motherfuckers I fuck with. Man, bro, it's it's kind of tough, man. But I'm definitely gonna have to go with RZA, even though Premier got some cuts. Uh, his cuts don't really overshine. You know what I'm saying? Like, um. Uh, Rizzo's though, like even. It don't. It, 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 nah, it, I don't. But the thing is, Rizzo is an actual artist though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think they was doing producer battle though. I think that's what they was angle was. And even on the producer side, man, it's a lot more flavor with Premier. I ain't even gonna lie, bro. But like, hey, but, but but like Rizzo got more hits than that nigga, and that's not that's not even knocking them. And maybe I'm speaking. Maybe sales might speak it differently. But like as I'm coming off top, like the beats that I'm thinking about from Rizzo and the beats that I'm thinking about from Mir, mm -hmm. like Rizzo beats still hit harder. Like they got a whole other like energy to them. Mir got some beats that make you want to rap. That's, you get a, that's get straight. That's shit. straight rock stuff back in the day. Like just all hard in your face type. You know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you know they got like a meme out there. They like um, it was just from the other battle we're gonna talk about. It's like when when you hear some music that's nice, you just turn your face up, your eyes quench in. You like you get it in up. all day for them. Yeah. Then they had another battle, bro. So like I guess we both just gonna have to fall out with Rizzo on that one. They had Manny Fresh versus Scott Scorch. That's hard, bro. I was I was a little mad at this battle because like Scott Scott Scorch Scott Scorch kind of introduced a lot of different shit like into this battle and like he worked on a lot of beats you know he worked with Dr Dre and shit like that mm -hmm. and like um that shit cool bro but like it, it wasn't strictly like hip hop like how Manny Fresh came into the battle you know Manny Fresh catalog is kind of limited but when I look it's at the, everything it's limited to everything we know. Yeah, but when I look at it, bro, it's it's kind of tough because I don't know how much of these songs Scott Scorch is responsible for. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like to give him credit for everything and knowing other people who worked on it with it, not to say that Manny Fresh to do that, but I know Manny produced these songs. I'm going with Manny Fresh, and I know Scott Scorch got a bigger catalog and a wider range, but like Manny Fresh, bro, created a whole fucking sound, bro, like. A sound that changed the generation that broke, bro. Like them cash money shits, bro. Scott Scorch got some joints, and I guess that'll probably be another podcast where we we'll dive deeper into this shit. We we'll do another episode, but like, motherfucking the big timers joints, the juvenile joints, mm -hmm. and really kind of outside of those with cash money, you really don't pull too many Manny Fresh. But the, he has so many joints that's in it that that's hard as fuck, bro. Like, I took some time and went back and listened to some Manny Fresh instrumentals. Yeah, bro. man. He, 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 the beats, he used to write a lot of stuff on top of rapping. All, all, you know what I'm saying? He, he introduced the whole sound to the, yeah. to the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, and, you know, they brought that Noia sound, and his dad was a DJ that kind of helped influence him that brought it out. You know what I mean? His dad was a lot of, moth, a lot of the time that did a lot of those things that we heard on the songs. You know what I mean? I right. told you, motherfuckers, I'll I be back. In a brand new Fleetwood Cadillac, and it's crazy oh, though. Oh. It's like it got that 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 New Orleans bounce, and you know we from up north, but that still connect to us, bro, because we came from that. And so, like, I still see like within culture and influence, like those things will never leave us because it's a part of us. Like, even though we all the way up here and we totally disconnected, when we hear it, this frequency that that rolled on, the vibe that that rolled on. The shit, yeah. that them, the shit that the niggas was on, the style, the dress, it transferred right over to us because of just, I guess, genetics or whatever, being black or whatever the case may be. And, yeah. um, you know, I like Scott Scorch. I give him all the credit. He made some hits. I mean, um, I mean, he, I mean, he did make some hits. I mean, you got, you got me by the roots, you know what I'm saying? Uh, with Eric Badu, Eve, yeah. right? 
Terra Squad, you got the lean back, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know yeah. lean back. You know, he, he got some hits. I don't wanna we don't went I don't wanna sit here and throw too much, you know. We just I'm agree with you with Manny Fresh too, because I'm just more I'm more was rocking with Manny Fresh anyway. Yeah. But you know, Scott Storch has Scott Storch did some things. He had a wide range of he worked with a lot of artists across across the music industry or whatnot. And yeah. I see what Manny Fresh didn't either. Yeah. And I, I ain't even gonna stunt. He do got a wider range and a deeper catalog than many fresh. That's not even a question. But I guess we just doing our personal bias. They had another. They had another one. They had French Montana versus Tory Lanez. <laughs> Where Frenchie been at, man? I ain't even seen Frenchie. Where you at, Frenchie? Ooh, I don't know if this is like a bias or whatever, but I guess. Man, I guess this this turned into a lot of beef because then French Montana got into it with other motherfuckers started saying he was better than other motherfuckers. He had more hits than other motherfuckers and a whole bunch of other shit. So I guess just for the wash to say I'm going to go with French Montana, I could think he had more hits than Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez recently had some shits that was dope. But if we go back in time, French Montana had a couple. Maybe that's a fucking tie. I don't know. It's a fucking wash. I really don't give a fuck about that. I don't even comment on either one of them since I'm not a fan of either one. But I guess I'm I'm, I'm more of a fan of Tory Lanez than French. But if I had if I had to choose if I had to choose one, I'm gonna go with French just because that's my, I just more I just know him more. Yeah, he harder and he got a connection with Max B. I guess we fuck with Max B. So I guess whatever. Um, the last oh. one was Erica Badu and Jill Scott. Woo! Last one. Shout out to my black queens, man. I love, yeah. I love my black queens. That was dope, you know. Grits, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers is on that shit. But, uh, man, it's kind of tough. I like both of them, man. If I had to say, like, range of different yeah. songs, it's yeah. kind of, that's tough, man. Like, some people going to slide with Jill. Jill got some shit. Erica got some shit. Yeah. Er- Erica kind of helped Jill's career. Jill helped Erica career. And then, eh. I wanted a black woman. Mm-hmm. You don't get to you don't get any better than two or two two of the pillars. So here goes some history, bro. Here goes some history. Like most people didn't know, man. At the beginning of the battle, you know, Erica went first and she played "You Got Me" by the Roots. So mm-hmm. some people some people might know that um, Jill Scott wrote that hook. So like. People didn't know that. So like this made it dope that Erica played that first and Erica shouted her out and said that. And uh, she played the hook and Jill Scott was talking about, you know, her writing the hook. So mm-hmm. then, it was, then it was Jill Scott turn to play and Jill Scott repeated the same song, but she played a different performance of the song. Instead of the studio version like Erica played, she played the performance that she had, but she had to perform instead of Erica and form, because Erica could make it or whatever. She wasn't there in time, caught up in traffic or whatever. Yeah. But then, then that pilot that that was the pilot to um, Jill Scott taking off as a performer. She talked about that on the um, on the thing. So that was just a dope moment, bro. To know that you know we love all up, we all like I say, the, we both about to say the same shit. Same time, we love the song. You know what I mean? It's a dope ass song, the classic. And so like to know like how much Philly was in that, and then he, you know he threw Erica on that because she had a little bit more notoriety. You know what I'm saying? Than Jill did, but just for what it all to play out and then now we at this verses and then to see the records of the viewership that's been on these verses bro like Teddy Riley mm-hmm. and um like man like there's been so high then the last one was super high it's just I'm crazy I'm like, the ingenuity because of the quarantine I mean cause, you know this wouldn't be going on if the quarantine wasn't going on yeah and then you had Erica Erica I ain't trying to cut you off but Erica bro had um products up bro hmm yeah, I know you was talking about the ingenuity, but that's what she she had products already set up, like t-shirts for like the verses of them with the names and shit on it. So right. if you watching it, you can with your picture. So like I feel you in the ingenuity and just like being having the initiative to drive and do this. And this is what Timberland and um and Swiss B started. So like that's some dope shit, man. It just show you like how we can affect the culture and just reinvent us reinvent ourselves and Take this shit to a whole other level. My liquor kicking in heavy. Speech yeah, slurred yeah. like a motherfucker. Yeah, that should be wrong. Yeah, man. And so, man, you know, one of the last things we're going to talk about before we take it out, and we probably going to talk about this for a minute, bro. The last dance, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> man, bro, this has been everything and then some, bro. 
Like carrying ESPN still, man. Bro. Michael like, carrying ESPN right now. Bro. Stop it. Get bro, off my this off shit. Man. He carrying ESPN right now. You know, I knew a lot of this shit, bro, but it's a lot of this shit, bro, that's just like mind blowing that I'm finding out. And it's crazy that like the like, public what are you talking about, bro. You know, it's certain things that people didn't um, act like they didn't know, like how determined Mike was, like how how hard nosed and how much he would get in your ass about shit. Like, you know, it took years for us to find out about, you know, like the fights that he had in practice and shit like that. But like, no, we you know, knew about that already. We knew about that when it happened. Nah, not like the average person. Like, if you were a basketball person that's like, you know, a aficionado and you're trying to dive in and, you know, dive deeper, you might know these things. You're reading like Bill Jackson books or you're paying attention to sports center. But some people didn't know. Like, even Mike said himself, he like, after watching this, you might think I was a tyrant more than a nice guy. So, drink once again, bro. This shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's just taking out of context. What I like about this this documentary to kind of put things into context, more yeah. in context that you might have uh, otherwise thought uh, the other way about. I mean, yeah. what you would think it was an asshole if you didn't watch the, the documentary. But, but in, in, those, in those moments, you got to call a spade like a spade. He was an asshole, but he felt like he needed to be an asshole to get whatever in and whatever means that he hey, felt, bro. It worked. It worked. That's, Six minutes. And that's what Bill Winnison said. He, yeah. said the, he said the shit worked. You know what I mean? John Packers, I think, nah. It was a Will Perdue also said the same. The shit yeah, worked. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I said, you can do whatever you want to do. And nobody would say anything about how you doing it or how you what you doing if you're winning. I think winning. to a certain extent with grown folks, you know, this is a deeper conversation when you talk about this too, bro. And I'm glad the last dance touched on this. You know, it was an old school mentality to kind of rule like that. But as we get older, you know, people got a little bit more, you know, um, you know, I guess a little bit more courage and they feeling like, hey, I don't have to take this. And you know, I mean they can step up for themselves and they're gonna make certain moves that they don't have to take. But it just depends on what culture you want to be down with. Like, I think at the end of the day, you do have some t- toxic cultures. And I feel like if it's a private entity, that's that entity. If it's getting government money, then you might want to step into it. But it ri- mm-hmm. otherwise, that, then that's what it is. So, like, you hear a lot of people now, like, trying to crucify Mike because of that. Like, he took Horace lunch and shit like that. Horace could have whooped his ass if he felt like it. He could have. You know what I'm saying? He like, he could have. He wanted to win. But at, the, at the end of the day, you know, you know, going through the shit I went through is having teammates. You know what I mean? I put through niggas through shit. You know what I mean? And I'm a cool motherfucker. But if I sense the nigga was soft, or if I think, if I sense like we got to make this mark tougher because it's gonna benefit us all, I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? Like whatever you might see that as, it might be took in the wrong way. You know, I just hope that you have more faith in me to understand that. Hey, you gonna see it in the long run. Yeah, it's hard, but it's hard because they even said that they didn't really, they saw it, they but they didn't really understand until later on. Yeah, oh. because oh. it's <laughs> like that. It's like that. Like, we wouldn't know Steve Kerr and Jed Bushler and Scottie Pippen as we do. We wouldn't know these cats, even Dennis Rodman. We wouldn't know them as we do if it wasn't for them having, them all having the success that they had, bro. That's, yeah. a, part, that's a part of this. Like, if they out in the first round, wouldn't nobody give a fuck? Like, they, you see what I'm saying? Wouldn't nobody yeah, give right, a fuck? They had a nice squad. They always had good squads. That's, was, that's what it is. So it, it kills me at times when people, you know, dealing with this last dance, they talk about, you can see it be like, oh, Michael Jordan had a stacked team and all this. No, they made it happen. And since they made it happen, yeah, they get the benefits of that. You know what I mean? They get to be looked at like that because they, they acted in the moment. That's yeah, how you. Yeah, that's how. You, never had a stacked team though. Yeah, you know what? I, I wouldn't. I Scotty. We never had like a, a one, two, three. It was a Mike and Scotty type thing. You had role players all around. Good. I, I was. I would say this. Cool after. Cool. After. If when we kept the same teams, when it separated the different three peaks, right? After we shown what we could do, then those teams were stacked. Before that, no, they wasn't stacked. But then after, then after they did what they did, you seen what quality player they was. At that point, you can say, yeah, they were stacked because then they showed what type of quality player they were. 
Well, that war, that's, it, that's, it, different. It's, that's different from joining that's some motherfuckers today. Yeah, joining some motherfuckers you already know. Right. Cold that's hell. different. That's whole totally wrong different. Talent because a free agent they didn't move around like that back in the day. Right. We made it. Once we you got made your it. contract. Once you got your contract and you signed, you was there. Which really says is segue into what you think about with Scotty though. How yeah. is this making Scotty look to you? We got a cooking competition, right? We doing a cooking competition. Okay. You you got what's ever in your cabinet. And I get to go to the store. Mm-hmm. You make something that tastes good, I make something that tastes all right. You're gonna get more credit. Yeah. Even if you make something that tastes more, as good as me, you go get more credit. Yeah. Why? Well, even if you make something, if you want to change the analogy to make something homegrown versus something that's, you know, homegrown cake, you know, homemade cake all the way from scratch versus a box cake. Yeah, and you know, real cooks, they can tell the box cake from the homegrown cake. You even can tell when you taste it because it's that it's that much of a difference. You know what I mean? So I get it, man. And it just show how, you know, how much this nigga went hard, bro. Mike was a dog and don't nobody compare to that, bro. Like, and even he proved it. Like, the fact that he scored on that level that he scored from jumpers, not just from going to the hole, yeah. but from jumpers. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just glad it's getting, it's getting it's bringing the, uh, his, uh, his story to a whole new audience of people, though, who just swear, swear by LeBron. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a LeBron hater. Come on, I'm not a LeBron hater. I respect everything he does. He is on the Mount Rushmore of greatest players of all time. But he not better than Mike. And that's just my honest opinion. He not. No. So, I mean, before we get all the hate and all kind of stuff, he ain't better than Mike. So, uh, this documentary, I'm not going to say proves it, but it kind of refreshes the, 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 the psyche of people who might have forgot. Y'all must have forgot. Shout out to Roy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. I got a good question for you. This is going to be a little bit time to set up. But this is a dope little question. I'm going to rub my hands on this one. Oh, man. So we going to play swap, swap a root. We playing swap a root. I'm making some shit up. I'm slurred. So swap a root. Uh-oh. Taking Michael Jordan's career, right? Mm-hmm. We taking Michael Jordan out. Yeah. And we putting LeBron James in. How many championships does LeBron James get out of six? Swiping Michael Jordan and, Mike and LeBron. Yeah, we started with we started with Michael career first. We taking Michael out of his career, and we inserting LeBron James in Michael Jordan's place in his career. Out of his six championships, how many does he get? You can break them down one by one. Ah. Uh. Versus, verse, I'm gonna ask you then. Versus the Lakers, does he win? No. It de it depends on what team he's with. The same team. You he got Phil he got Phil Jackson. He got Scottie Pippen. He got all of them. Same shit. We just taking Michael Jordan out, nigga, and we putting Scottie Pippen in. Not Scottie Pippen. We putting in. Me, you know, I'm tripping. We you, taking you out. My, we taking Michael Jordan out, and we putting Scottie Pippen in. I'm saying the same shit. We taking Michael Jordan out. We putting LeBron James. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that he wins because just the killer instinct. Okay. Let's. So, let's okay. This, I'm, I'm gonna say at that because hey. because we doing it because we doing it. Save time. Save time. In another career. This would have been like towards save. the beginning. Like, right. Not the beginning, but like year seven. Save time. Save time. Save time. Because we got to go through six. So save time, and you can break it down for me at the end. Okay. Okay. Does he win against Portland? Yes. Does he get win against Phoenix? No. Does he win against uh, Seattle? With the Wolves, with Pippen? Yes. He wins that. Does he win against, what do he go for Utah out of the two? I think he go one for one. One for one. Okay. All right. So before you, uh, so go ahead, go ahead, break yours down. I'll give you mine afterwards. So you lose against, well, no, you win against the Lakers. You I got him winning him. early in his career? You got him winning against the Lakers, I'll tell you hold what. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How old was he then at that point? He had been in the league seven years? Yeah. 
Le Mike had been in the league seven years. LeBron had been in the league seven years. So that's equivalent to him playing against Dallas. Ah, uh, yeah, but you could say that. You could say that's yeah, that's equivalent to playing against Dallas. He had a killer instinct. What I'm saying. Ah, uh, hold on. That's why I'm telling you. Think wisely about this one. Damn. Yeah, cause it, yeah. Okay, I changed back to what I was saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> Want to beat the Lakers just cause his mindset, his mindset, his mindset wasn't right or whatnot. So his first championship, if you compare it, like you said, comparably with it's Dallas. LeBron. You taking LeBron mannerism, LeBron skill set, LeBron himself, and input him into that. He wasn't the scorer that Mike was at that at that time. Uh, as a on consistent on a consistent basis. Okay. Way worse, he way worse free throw shooter than Mike was. Okay. Or whatnot, and playing back then. You know, you want to free throw line a lot because it's physical. Yep. So, uh, with that being said, I mean, and I just didn't think at that point in his career, he was just as smart uh, as far as having his impact on the game. He wanted to get everybody involved or whatnot, but it's a time when you need to take over and you need to go and be that alpha dog. So, I would agree with you that he wouldn't have won that first series against the Lakers. Magic would have beat his ass. The Lakers would have schooled them niggas. Um... I don't think it was enough killers on the Bulls to help him at that point. Cause Mike killed that, that series, bro. Like Scotty Pippen played great defense, but Mike was the engine on that series. That's why I said he didn't score like Mike did. Yeah, Mike, Mike like, yeah. He tried to facilitate, but you already got facilitators on the team. He wasn't there yet. He wasn't there yet. I know people might disagree with that, but that's he is with that. So Portland, I agree with you. I think in that Portland series, LeBron would have matured at that point because of the loss from that first year. And Pippen then, was way better year two. Pippen was way better. Pippen had like 40 in that playoff series. I think, you know what I'm saying? Pippen snapped in that playoff series. His yeah. defense was good yeah. that first year, but he stepped up totally in that second year. He was way um, better. And just, just the style of play, I think he would have did better. LeBron, how he played, I think he would have did better. Even though... They can't, they can't. The fact that he's bigger than everybody else is what would have got... It's what I, got. I wouldn't think LeBron would want to run with Magic. They probably would have want to slow it down, kind of how Mike and him was able to play in the half court. But against Portland, I think he would have wanted to run, and LeBron could have been himself and did that shit. Portland was um, Phoenix, bro. So LeBron, LeBron, ten years in, I would still have to go with LeBron because how dope he is, and he's way better than Charles Barkley. This is not a question. So yeah, I would have to give him that just in leading his team. If he had that Bulls team from the 93 season, because that 92 season was probably one of their better seasons. And that layover still would have had them right. So how would you feel about the 93 season? I don't know. I'm still saying. I'm still saying, I'm saying LeBron would have won that. I know that Le I know that LeBron is better than Charles Barkley. Yeah. yeah. I know this. Or not. But I just thought that. Besides Mike, and if you if you take away Mike, Phoenix had like a better team. We had a better team defensively, or whatnot. But offensively, Phoenix could score. Yeah, but we gotta you gotta take into con in, in context that LeBron's LeBron defended that Mike. But, but LeBron played LeBron oh. LeBron played different. So like, as far as production, bro, he ain't too far under Le, under Mike. So I think he still would have produced. I don't think I don't see like I said, he's not the defender that Mike is. Yeah, but what defense Mike just killed Dan Marley in that series, bro. Like that's pretty much what stands out about that series. Mike killed Dan Marley. Like he went on a mission to destroy. And early in LeBron's career, when LeBron was in Miami, LeBron, LeBron listen, 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 get this out. When LeBron played defense in Miami, bro, it was un it was unworldly. It was on some god level shit when they played defense, bro. In Miami, when he for him, and that second year with him and Wade, when they was killing, that's kind of how I'm comparing these things. I'm looking at LeBron runs at his age and then that time. I'm kind of kind of doing a combination of both. But then this time, this is Miami LeBron. Miami LeBron would beat motherfucking Charles Barkley. Period. I don't give a damn what Le what version of Charles Barkley it is. Miami LeBron is way better than that Charles Barkley. You're not playing just against Charles Barkley. No, but what I'm saying at this point, LeBron had that killer instinct. He had got taught it. You see what I'm saying? 
he had already been through and lost. So that's why I give you that to say he would have lost to the motherfucking Magic. Not to the Magic, he would have lost to Magic. He would have lost to the Lakers. But after LeBron lost, LeBron became an ultimate dog on a whole nother level that put him within that Mount Rushmore of players. The Miami LeBron is what elevated him to like a whole nother level, bro. Them niggas was chasing niggas shit down. Yeah. They, was ca- they was catching everything. These dudes, bro, was on a whole nother level. Like they elevated from what they was. They was arguably like Hall of Fame conversation, but the fact that they got together and they just um, slouch. They actually played defense. They actually ran a break, break and shared the ball. Like they was on a whole other level. So I would have to say that, in my opinion, that LeBron and them would have beat Dan Marley and Charles Barkley and Kevin Johnson and them. Definitely with Scottie Pippen. Definitely. Two of them wing defenders and two of them niggas on a break. He wouldn't have played as good as defense as Mike, but they still would have played defense like that, bro. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying I don't I just don't think the, the the way that Mike had to score in that series because it was such a high scoring series to begin with. On top of the defense that Chicago was already bringing into the series, or would not. It was such a I don't think that just Mike yeah. LeBron Mike and Mike and and Charles Barkley was going at it forty for forty or would not. Are you gonna get that the whole series or would not? Yeah. 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 Come on, he still because the way he played, he, he wanna get everybody in. at this point. At this point, killer, I, that killer I, to the point where he, he so, did. He did. That's when the killer instinct kicked in. That's was at the point when Wade came to him and told him, Bro, I need you to take over. And what was so impactful about that is that what do you think LeBron James thought about Dwayne Wade before that moment? He's a franchise player. Somebody you want to play with. He's a, he's a champion. Do you think that LeBron knew he was better than Dwayne Wade before that moment? No. After that moment, he knew. Yeah, I get that. And that was the change. The championship. When when, he was, it was just him. When, when LeBron always struggled with that. Like, should I be the killer? Right? You get a nigga on your team who you already know is the killer. Right, mm-hmm. so you already came to his team because you want his guidance. You already know this your boy. You you following his leadership. He's your big brother. He's older than you by a couple years. I'm just kind of painting a picture of what I think in his head how he's looking at this relationship. But wait, this nigga say, bro, you better than me, bro. Like you the man. You got to take over and do this shit. That's a whole other level of confidence, and then you not trying to step on his toes. That's why they lost that first year. I guess, I guess I can give you a little bit of that. And it was more like, okay, now, and then that after that, after losing, it brought in a certain angry man. Remember, he became the villain even more. Angry man. I'm about to stump your toes out. And what do we say about LeBron compared to Jordan that he don't have? That, that, uh, that, I don't say the it factor, but that killer instinct. That, way, that which he gained after he lost. Ah, it was that. LeBron James and motherfucking the first year when they played against the Thunder that year. LeBron was a motherfucking dog. He won MVP that year, didn't he? He did win MVP. He was fucking oh, mad, yeah. bro. He was fucking mad. Like Mike motivation was being angry. Kobe motivation was being. Charles was MVP in '93 too, bro. But what I'm saying is that. His motivation of anger elevated him to another status. He had already been through that. We both agree that he lost in 91 to Magic, right? Yeah. That brought out the anger. So instead of saying D. Wade tells him to take over, it's Scottie Pippen that tells him to take over. He still takes over and he becomes what he is, which is he's a dog. Like he had to learn that from pain, bro. LeBron didn't have that before pain. But after LeBron loses that finals, bro, he goes out like a man every single time after that. Even in the series where he conceded, it's more like saying, okay, other years he fought until you killed him. He was still swinging, like bleeding and still swinging. And then the years where Golden State, he was just like, all right, man, just shoot me in my motherfucking head. I fought you hard enough. But bro, we didn't been through this shit already. Go ahead and just take me out. He didn't give up. It was just more like it was the inevitable. 
So it was just like, I ain't even had a supporting cast to fight you. I came to fight with a motherfucking pistol and you got an AK-47. Yeah, I'm gonna put up a fight. Okay. So you had Kyrie and Kevin Love. Not that year, the last year. That year, he fought a little bit harder than that last year. Oh. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> that was a little bit different than that last year. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, I give him credit for what he's due. So within that, let's not get caught up on that. We just agree to disagree. But mm -hmm. I got I got him winning that joint. Um against the um against the motherfucking Sonics. I got LeBron winning that one. I got LeBron winning that one too. And then to make it out quick, I got him splitting the um jazz. Cause I don't think Gary Payton could could uh could stop LeBron. They would try to throw him on him, but yeah, I got him splitting it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work out for him. But this time Scott. Ha! <sighs> I got yeah. him spinning the jazz. I'm spinning the jazz. I got him losing. I got him losing that last one. I can see that. When the first one losing the losing the last one, I, I don't can see, see that. I don't see him making that defensive play that Mike made to take. Yeah. Oh, with you being down and a shot or whatnot. Uh, he, he would be at the age that when Scotty was hurt when his back was hurt. I just I don't see. I mean, the flu game. Yeah. Not to say that he would have got the flu. I ain't going that deep, but um, <laughs> he would have been thirty-five, like Mike was thirty-five, and so we that would have been this LeBron. He would have led the lead in assists, you know what I mean? Whatever the case might be, but I think in certain moments he probably wouldn't have pulled it out. He would have been too old to pull it out versus that system that had a second. That, that had a, John, remember John Stocks? I mean John Stockton and Carl Malone was was humming. Yeah, this is what they did, but. Overall, if I really had to put my money on it, at the end of the day, I would think LeBron would have been five and one. I wouldn't say four and two. I would say five and one. I would say that at the end of the day, if I had to put some money on it, I would kind of edge Utah one and one. But depending on which one he lost, you see what I'm saying? If he lose the first, if he lose the first one, then I could see him. I could see him either or. I could see it either or. So I'm still gonna edge a little bit more and hedge my bet and say five and one. So let's do the reverse now. Uh, Michael Michael Jordan and LeBron James. That's uh, it. Against San Antonio? Yeah. With that team? Yeah. He probably would have lost that one. I say you win it. I'll tell you why you win it. Tony Mondo, tell I I can tell you why you win this one. I can tell you why you won this one because I remember. I can tell you. I can tell you why. I can that tell you. So garbage. I can tell you why Jordan wins this series, and it's and it's to me, it's not even close, bro. I can tell you easily why Jordan wins this series. A lot of these games in this series is close, right? In that first series, in, in the in first, that, the, in the first first versus that, that's Spurs, got swept. So you put Jordan in that. Yeah, what? but a lot of those games was close, right? Like, we can pull up the box score. I can show you all those games close. You could pull it up on your phone if you don't believe what I'm going to tell you is true. I'm not saying that. All of those games were pretty much, like, maybe what they got 4-0. So, yeah. like, two of those games was, like, one point off, bro. One or two points off. And maybe the other ones, I think they had one blowout, and I think the other ones kind of something that was different. I was saying but, that you could just put them over the top. Thing about it is though, seven. They was a better, San Antonio was a better team, bro. I'm, I'm gonna tell you about it. San Antonio really didn't play too much good defense on them. What they did was they forced LeBron to do what? They, they, well, they let him score. No, they didn't let him score. They forced LeBron to do something. They forced him to shoot. Shoot, but that's everybody. Everybody no, no, no. forcing. No, they forced him to shoot from the mid range. If you do that against Michael Jeffrey, oh. how do you? You, you hold on, hold on. Listen, to what I'm about to say. They couldn't let they couldn't stop LeBron from driving. No. So they wouldn't have stopped Le MJ from driving. LeBron's bigger than everybody, but they but wouldn't stop. Listen, they, they wouldn't. Stop. They wouldn't stop MJ from driving. Right. What? And then at that age, MJ wrecked havoc on defense. Yes, he did. MJ wins that series, bro. MJ has no Saudi pick. MJ wins that series, bro. Need somebody else, bro. Larry, Larry, Larry Hughes averaged twenty. Larry Hughes averaged twenty that year, bro. Larry Hughes. Is not Larry Hughes averages twenty, so his twenty ain't gonna go down, bro. So what? How many points are you gonna add in from Jordan? Yeah, but the thing, nobody else stats dip, bro. How many points is you adding in from Jordan? 
30. Probably even more. This 2007 when the NBA was trash. The 2000s, a lot of times in the 2000s, bro, the NBA was trash ass. Those those Bulls teams would be like, listen. Stop the music. Those Bulls teams would be like the 10th and 11th place teams in the NBA today. Uh, with LeBron? The Ben Gordon Bulls teams that oh, made the playoffs in 2007 with Vinny Del Negro. I'm man. telling, I'm talking about the temperature of the league at that time, bro, was trash. That's why LeBron made it to the finals. Detroit was old. They had ran out of gas. And, and Ben Wallace was gone. And he beat them niggas. He didn't beat them niggas with Ben Wallace. He beat them niggas after Ben Wallace left. So I give LeBron credit for doing what he got to do. He snapped in that motherfucking series against Detroit. Mm-hmm. But that, sh- that shit did carry over to motherfucking San Antonio because they made him shoot jumpers and he had no jump shot. You try that same shit against Michael Jeffrey Jordan at that age and he burns your ass. At what age? What was Michael Jordan doing at that motherfucking time? How many years? Let's just take how many years he was in the league if you want to make it like a fair comparison. How many years LeBron was in the league at that time? Three? I think that's probably was about his fifth year. Nah. He was not in four, the league three years four, in the finals. Four. Four? I thought that was his fifth year. I think it was he was born. He, drafted, that was he, was, dra- he was drafted in 2003 and he was wait in the minute, finals. Wait, wait a minute. That was his fourth year. Fourth year. Fourth year. Yeah. Michael Jordan, fourth year. Okay. This nigga. Michael Jordan fourth year, he damn near what was what round the time he won defensive player of the year, MVP and all that shit. Bro, it's bro, it's that nigga that that Michael Jordan nigga would have won the fucking finals, nigga. With that team in that NBA. He would have beat San Antonio ass. You know what? I'm gonna have to give it to you on that, man. I, I was just trying to play devil's advocate because I know we all we, we know how great Michael is, right? Bro, I can't let you have that one. That nigga would have won that one. <laughs> it's it's some in this line that I'm gonna have to agree Mike would have lost. Michael, I, I hate to go against Mike and say he would have lost, but it's something this I'm gonna have to say he lost. So I hate to do it either, but you can't just say Michael would have won on everything. That's everything. That's no. Nah, I'm just saying that first year Michael would have won. So Dallas, Mike wins. Mike wins. Yeah, Mike wins that. OKC, Mike wins. Mike wins that. Yes. Um, San Antonio, Mike wins. No, right. no need for no Ray Allen shot. Mike wins. Cause he got Wade too, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Mike wins. Um, the next year when San Antonio shot the barn off that bitch. That's kind of tough. They shot the motherfucking roof off that motherfucker. They was, they didn't fucking miss, bro. That was Kawhi coming out party that year. I'm still it going, was, I'm still going with Mike. Bro. It was Kawhi coming out party, but I don't think Kawhi stopped Mike. I, I just don't. I don't I'm, think Kawhi stopped Mike. I'm still going with Mike with that one, bro. Yeah, I don't think okay. So what's next? Um, we going back to Cleveland. Back to Cleveland. That Golden State. Yeah, Man. the first one. The first one. Kyrie and Kevin Love go down. And this is Mike against that Golden State team. He win that. Cause LeBron snapped. I agree with you. LeBron had hell of numbers, and those LeBron, games were close. Yeah, LeBron snapped. So imagine what Mike would have did. So. Those ga- and those games was close too. I remember we. That's when we had our crib, bro. I remember that shit. We just watched those games. That shit was crazy. Mike would have won. Um, that. First, um, the, the ship that Braun won is 73 and nine year. I say Mike win, LeBron won, Mike win. And I hate to cop out that quick, but Mike was Mike, bro. The killer Mike that he was in those times, he would have beat that 73 and nine teams. With the second time, not KD, this is the year before KD. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yes. He would have won. He would he would have beat them. He yeah. was ready for it. I give you that. Yeah. And I then I got him. Um, in the last two, I got him split. I got him losing the first one, and I got him winning the second one. Woo! <laughs> KD, Steph, Clay, Mike. Cause you gotta think, Ky- Kyrie we hurt, and Kevin Love always hurt, and Jr. just dumbass. Ah, uh, you say you got to split them? Yeah, even if you switch it up, having them winning the first one and then losing the second one, I got them splitting them. 
he that's hard, man. It's, because now you're playing with Kyrie. Right. Uh, the first one, first one with Kyrie, the second one without. The second one without Kyrie. Kyrie was gone that last one. Well, he did get to the finals without Kyrie. <laughs> he would have lost he would have lost the second one. Won the first and lost second, so Mike would have been six and one. He lost second. Nah, he would have been what? I said six and one. He would have been what? Seven, seven and one? Yeah. So we both, that's how I kind of I scored it. I kind of got it like that. I don't know how you got it. You said LeBron would have been four and two. I guess, yeah. I got uh, LeBron four and two. I got LeBron four and two. I got him losing that Phoenix series. So what y'all got, man? If you swap Michael Jordan and LeBron James, and took them and replaced them with each other when they finals appearances, what would their records be? I'm saying that Mike would have been five and one in LeBron's shoes. Nah, I'm tripping. Let me start it over. So, hey y'all, what would y'all do if you swapped out? Mike shoes and Mike would have been seven and one in LeBron's shoes. Yeah, look, Mike would have been seven and one in LeBron's shoes and Mike and LeBron would have been five and one, my report. Calvin, what you got? I got LeBron four and two, because unlike you, I got him losing that Phoenix series. And I got Mike seven and one or whatnot. With it. And it, I really feel like it's a toss up because he probably could be eight and he probably could be eight and no. But I'm gonna give one of those Warriors series with Kevin Durant. Uh with Kevin Durant, Steph, Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson, cause Clay Thompson, because that's a hell of a goddamn team. I'm gonna give one of those uh wins. To, to them, and yeah, that's why he'd be 71. That's a hell of a team. I say he win that first. If he wins the first one, he loses the second one, or he can, or he can, yeah, he wins the first one, he loses the second one, or whatnot. Cause, cause by that time, he old in his career, it's winding down or whatnot, so I give him, give him a pass on the last one. That's a great yeah. team. That's a great team, that, that Warriors team, with uh, KD, Steph, and Clay. So, for sure, for sure, yo, man, that's kind of gonna wrap our episode for this week, man. You know, mm-hmm. we looking to get more people involved. So, you interested to come on, join in the nightcap, bring your drink, join in the conversation? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's kind of to help benefits us all. Definitely, since we're going through this Corona season, I'm kind of slurred right now because I'm off it. But, um, Cal, if you got any um last words before we get up out of here, bro? Stay safe out here and be positive. You know what I'm saying? Turn every negative into a positive. So we out there. We find we trying to come up out of this better than we came into it. Peace out. All right, y'all. Peace out. Be be safe out there.